service of CNC Worldwide. CNC podcasts are a service of CNC Worldwide. WHEC TV reports a bank is moving to foreclose on the Medley Center in Arundaquoit. The Japanese bank, which loaned developer Scott Conjol the money to buy the shuttered mall, says he never paid back the $44 million loan. No more a bank has filed a foreclosure notice on the property. Conjol and his Burson Properties company bought the empty mall in 2008 with ambitious plans to convert it into a multi-use residential, commercial, and entertainment center, but he was apparently never able to get the financial package together. Since then, Conjol has fallen into dispute with the town of Arundaquoit and Monroe County, and the mall's tax abatement deal was canceled. Arundaquoit supervisor Adam Bellow said a foreclosure could be a new beginning for the Medley Center, opening the property up for a new developer. A statement from Burson suggests the lawsuit is retaliation for Burson's suit against Nomura Bank. The developer says the bank stalled his project because it wanted to get out of the commercial real estate market. A third public meeting on whether Spencerport schools should join the Urban Suburban Transfer Program was no less heated than the first two. The chair several times having to tell members of the audience to stop yelling from their seats and interrupting the speakers. This meeting brought out more supporters than opponents of the program, which brings minority students from city schools to attend suburban districts. Opponents Tuesday night wanted to know why the program excludes white city school students. Supporters say it gives students a better education by letting them meet and work with different sorts of people. Spencer Port plans to vote later this month on whether it will join. M&T Bank has closed on the final piece of financing to complete the Tower at Midtown project. The $36.5 million syndicated loan will fund renovation of the 17-story building into a mixed residential office and commercial building. The renovation of the stripped-down tower is a joint project of Buckingham Properties and Morgan Management. The completed tower will have 181 apartments and three floors of retail and office space. It should be done about the end of the year. The New York State Assembly has elected Carl Hasty of the Bronx, its new speaker. Hasty took the podium vowing to listen and build consensus in the Assembly, also describing himself as honored and humbled. He also said it's time to move forward on ethics reform. There's no question that the actions of a few have given cause for cynicism. Through reform and action, we will change the cynicism into trust once again. Former Speaker Sheldon Silver had to give up leadership of the Assembly after 21 years when he was brought up on federal corruption charges. Assemblyman Hasty was the choice of all five New York City Democratic committees, commanding such a majority that all the other candidates, including Majority Leader Joe Morelli of Arundiquit, dropped out when faced with the inevitable. The former Speaker still represents his Manhattan district in the Assembly, but Sheldon Silver's desk is now in the back row. State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman has written to four major retailers calling on them to stop selling nutritional supplements that either contained ingredients not on the labels or didn't contain the labeled substance. Schneiderman says his office has tested samples from across the state and found that 79 percent of the store brand products did not actually contain any DNA from the plants listed on the label or they had other material added. Schneiderman's office sent letters to GNC, Target, Walmart, and Walgreens regarding their store brand herbal supplements, telling them to take them off the market. The samples came from stores across the state, Long Island to Buffalo, including Rochester. Governor Cuomo's budget presentation last month left out something school districts around the state were looking for, how much each of them can expect in state aid. At state budget hearings on Tuesday, the acting commissioner of the state education department said she can't help them. Elizabeth Berlin says there is a database that districts can use to estimate what they'll get, and she's working to get it updated. But the acting commissioner told lawmakers she's in no position to provide school districts with the additional information they need to complete their own budgets. The so-called school aid runs are usually released the day the governor delivers his annual budget message, this time, they're not being run until near the end of this month. The Ontario County Sheriff's Office is looking for a group of four men who tried a smash-and-grab robbery at the man's jeweler store in Victor. The Sheriff's Office says four black men in their 20s wearing hoodies entered the store at Eastview Mall and tried to make off with a number of Rolex watches. They fled after being confronted by store security. The car they used was found later in a hotel parking lot and turned out to have been stolen in Pittsford. They're asking witnesses to come forward. 
After complaining for months, residents along Edgemere Drive in Greece finally saw work start this week on clearing away the huge pile of construction debris on the grounds of the former Crescent Beach Hotel. Neighbors have been objecting to the two-story debris pile for months since a developer's plan to renovate and reopen the historic restaurant got stalled. The town of Greece threatened the property owners with $30,000 in fines. They also threatened to have the work done and bill it back to the developers. Your next CNC podcast is whenever you click on one of these pages and catch one. We post updates. We post updates as necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.